أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله وهو الذي يلاذين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كن أعبد ويا كن أستعين إذن سرات المستقيم سرات الذين عرمت عليهم غير المغدور عليهم ولن دولين آمين وإله كم إله واحد لا إله إلا هو رحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي الحي لا تأخذه سنة ولا نعوم لا هو ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع إنه إلا بإذني يألم أدين عيدهم وما خلفهم ولا يهدون نبي الشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسير كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يعوده هفتهما 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 وهو العلي العظيم ألف لامي الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم هو الذي يصوركم في رحمان كيف يشاء لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم شهيد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو الملائكة وأولو العلم قائما بالقصة لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم لا إله إلا هو لا يجمع أنكم في اليوم قيامة الريبة فيه ما نستاق من الله حديثا تلكم الله ربكم لا إله إلا هو الخلق كل شيء فأقدوا وهو على كل شيء واقلون كتابي ما أوهي يا إليك من ربك لا إله إلا هو العبدان المشركين قل يا أيها الناس إني رسول الله إليكم جميعا الذي له مك السماوات والأرض لا إله إلا هو يبي ويميت فأمنوا بالله ورسوله النبي الأمي الذي يؤمن بالله وكلماته وتأتي له لا أكون تفقدون وما أميو إلا لي يأبدو إلا غن واحدا لا إله إلا هو سفانه وما يسرقون لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رعوف رحيم فإن تولوا فاكل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توقلت وهو رب الله العظيم وجوزنا بني إسرائيل بحرا فأتباعهم فرعون وجنوده بغيا وعطوا هدا إذا أدركه الغارة كل خلا أمنت شو أن له لا إله إلا في أمنت به بن إسرائيل وإنا من المسلمين لا إلم يستجبوا لكم فعلموا أن ما أنزل بإلم الله وأن لا إله إلا هو فهل أنتم مسلمون كذلك أرسلناك في أمة قد خلت من قبلها أمم لتتلو عليهم الذي أوهينا إليك وهم يكفرون برحمن قل هو ربي لا إله إلا هو عليه توقوت وهو عليه متاب ينازل الملائكة بروه من أمره على من يشاء من عباده أن أنفروا عنه لا إله إلا أنا فتكون وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يألم السر وأخفى أنه لا إله إلا هو الأسم الحسنى إننا إذناني أن الله لا إله إلا أنا فأبدوني وأقيم سلوات لذكري إنما إلهكم الله الذي لا إله إلا هو واسع كل شيء علما وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول لا يثير إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فأعبدون 
وَتَنُونِي إِسْتَبْحَبَ مُغَابِبًا فَتَنَعَ عَنْ لَنَصْدِرَ إِلَيْهِ فَنَبَّاتِ الظُّلُمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَّا إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين فتعالى الله ملك الحق لا إله إلا هو رب العرش الكريم لا لا إله إلا هو رب العرش العظيم وهو الله لا إله إلا هو الله الحمد في الأولى والآخرة والله الحكم وإليه ترجعون ولا تقدم الله إلا عن آخر لا إله إلا هو كل شيء حلق إلى وجه له الحكم وإليه ترجعون يا أيها الناس كروا لنعمة الله عليكم هل من خلق غير الله غير الله يرزقكم من الصناع والأرض as he created mankind لا إله إلا هو فأنا تفكون إنهم قنوا إتا خلالهم لا إله إلا الله يستقدرون خلاقكم من نفس واحدة ثم جعل منها زوجها وأنزلنا لكم من الأنعام من ثمانية أز as well as ya wa skulukum fi butun ummaha khalqun min ba'di khalqin fi tuluj matin thalath talikum allahu rabbukum lahu al-mulku la ilaha illa huwa fa'anna tusrafun faqfil li fanbi wa qablit tawbat tawbat shahid al-aikadi fit tawwa la ilaha illa huwa ilayhi masir ذلكم الله ربكم خالق كل شيء لا إله إلا هو فأنا تفكون هو الحي لا إله إلا هو فادقوه مسلسين له دين الحمد لله رب العالمين لا إله إلا هو يفي ويميت ربكم ورب أبائكم الأولين فأعلم أنه لا إله إلا هو واستغفر لثنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والله يعلم متقبل بكم ومأثوهم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته قاشيا متصادعا من خاشات الله واتك الأمته نضربها للناس لا ألهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو العلم الغيب والشهادة وهو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المحيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله يا ما يشركون هو الله خالق البر المصور الله الأسماء الحسنى يساب هو لهما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم لا إله إلا هو عليه الله فإلا تواخل المؤمنون رب المشرق والمغرب لا إله إلا هو فتاقص واقلا قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد فلم يكن له كفوا أهد سبحان رب رب الذات أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته the souls and the builder right the day is leading up whatever this thing is that we decreed upon to call a week where we're good and this day was better than the previous and inshallah that the incoming days will be better than the ones before alhamdulillah like i've been on an iman guzali binge recently right <laughs>
Salon, what if I knew? But this chapter on Ghazali, it was like, every time you read something from the chapters, and okay, wait a minute, I remember Sheikh Hafiz Bamba mentioning something similar in Mosella Jinnah, and you get so many of those intuitions that it's just like, uh, Pull up Masalako Jinnan while while reading right beside this. So like there's a couple of verses in there where Sheikh Akhmadu Bamba uh mentions uh other quotes and uh verses and teachings from Imam Ghazali on some of the exact same topics that are in this individual book that Imam Ghazali put out the alchemy of happiness and to and to find a, a different vibration of that same light, same exact teachings all throughout Masalako Jinnan and the beloved Sheikh Kamba. Um, but uh, definitely gave props from uh, the, the the source of some of the people that he may have uh, read about and and studied and seen on the on the astral plane. Stuff <laughs> <I'm> real <clears throat> For those that have it, it was in the groups. What's that groups PDF of the of the book? And I'm really lie. We're 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 halfway through actually. Because the first chapter was knowledge of self. Because if you don't have that, then what 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 else are you seeking? Yeah, you're not, you're not gonna find it. Probably not. But Quran says, "He who knows himself shall know his Lord." All right. So, the second chapter in the book was knowledge of God. I love how Ghazali got the chapters broken down with certain revelations in the Quran. So. Of course, after that, knowledge of self, knowledge of God, it's like, I get this thing now, and the, the entity on the inside of it that chooses what finger to wag and which finger not to wag, I, I know that being now. And, and, and that had to have come from somewhere transcendent and immaterial because I haven't seen not one human body manifest another one outside of another body and then clothe it in the body and, and call it a human outside of itself at all number Allah. The third chapter was knowledge of this life. Because of course there's another um I won't say separation or dualistic mindset, but the way the chapters are divided, right? You get knowledge of self, knowledge of God. Chapter two, chapter three is knowledge of this life previous class and video. So it would only be right the way that Ghazali is uh, writing and revealing this and through how it's also found in Masalical Jinnan for the fourth chapter to be knowledge of the next world. Knowledge of the next world. Doesn't waste time to hold any punches though, because of course with this one, like how many people do you know that then that left here and went there and then came back? Wait, so much. All right, but for for a, a such a high uh, saint and mystic and pro prolific writer, and honestly, a wali Allah as Imam Ghazali, he starts off with, as regards to the joys of heaven and the pains of hell, which will follow this life, depending on how this person's vibing right, joys of heaven or pains of hell that will follow this life. All believers in the Quran and the traditions are sufficiently informed. You got the book, you got the criterion. The Quran itself has other uh, names and attributes and descriptive terms about it that remind us what we can get from it. So all of the believers in the Quran and the traditions that we're reading about are sufficiently informed. So if we were to read and study those, we would be also, but Ghazali's going to get there. But often he says it escapes them that there's this spiritual heaven and a spiritual hell right? because concerning like the, the first of what uh, Allah said to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. I have not seen nor have ear heard. I and ear, I have not seen and nor ear heard neither hath it entered into the heart of man to conceive the things which are prepared for the righteous. Because in, in, in the heart, all right, in the heart of the enlightened man, in the heart of the mystic seeking more light, there, there is a window 
opening on the realities of the spiritual world, especially if this thing right here has been polished up good, right? You know, there's a window opening up on those realities of the spiritual world. So granted, he might be trapped in flesh temporarily right now, but he knows not by not by hearsay, not by traditional belief, but by actual experience, what produces this uh, wretchedness or happiness that I seemingly experience while I'm, you know, inhabiting this thing that everybody agrees upon to call a human body. But what produces that wretchedness or happiness in the soul is as clearly and decidedly as the physician knows what procedures and sicknesses or health in the body, what benefits, what particular condition in the body. So just as a doctor knows what kind of medicine to prescribe someone that has a bodily ailment, there are also different dimensions of spiritual heaven and hell. Like I might not be feeling that good right now, man, you shouldn't have ate so-and-so, stomach's a little bothering me. There's something to take to settle that. What if your mind and your heart and yourself and your spirit ain't right? Is Pepto Bismol gonna gonna fix the knives? Like, is this does a Tylenol PM gonna cut the head off the shaitan? I would be lie. No, it, it it doesn't. Because the spiritual man, to kind of quote another great person, great great teacher, Dr. Khaled Muhammad said, in one of the last lectures that he he gave while in the flesh that. Heaven and hell are nothing but states of the mind. Heaven and hell are nothing but states of the mind. And a person that knows that, Imam Ghazali goes on to say, he recognizes that the knowledge of God and the worship are medicinal and that ignorance and the sins are the deadly poisons for the soul. So staying away from those, uh, staying away from ignorance, staying away from sin, prevents the soul from being susceptible to succumbing to that sickness. But continuing the knowledge of God by constant remembrance, constant zikr and worship are medicinal. Like zikr is quicker than liquor, right? That Shakespeare Sufi says a lot. Also the, the, the zikr and the mantra produces a, a, a heavenly vibration within, a heavenly mental state because at surface level, some of the, the, the zikrs and chants and words and mantras may just seemingly be words on paper that translate to English, right? But if you break down those words and dive a bit deeper into the inner meaning of those words, and then you turn around and recite something like Maharaj and Jaya mantra, you might want to stop at 108. You might not want to do any more than that because it's, it's, it's just, it changes and it raises the vibration of the person based on the the intensity and the fervor behind the practice. But on the flip side, what's this liquor going to do now? The liquor is just going to produce a clouded and a sick mind. It can't remember a lot because of all of the clouds. It can't even see through to look at and try to remember what it is he's trying to look at. He's never going to get there. So Ghazali mentions, and, and this is what Bamba lines up, that many many even so or so-called uh, learned men from blindly following others' opinions, knowing this and having this knowledge of God and, and having the worship at the exact same time, simultaneously, perpetually right here. And of course, with the members of the body have no real certainty in their beliefs regarding the happiness or the misery of souls in the next world because who's going to be sad in, in Jannah? Who, who, how? Mm -mm. But he who will attend to the matter with a mind unbiased by prejudice will arrive at clear convictions on the matter that just like there are certain things that happen to the body that require you to put things in it to make it feel better, there are certain vibrations that the spirit can vibrate at that are a little lower than they should possibly be. And a way to raise them back up is through zikr, or raise them back up through raising salat. It's what we used to call it back in the nation, right? Or doing the worship, doing the practices. What's 
Sheikh Sufi says that a Sufi must have a daily practice. All right. Must have a daily practice because Sheikh Abdul Bamba mentions that any such that neglects the mystical and the inner aspects of religion, uh, i.e. Uh, the religion itself and Tasawuf, Sufism, shall perish in the next world by the will of the majestic Lord. But let that sound uh, apocalyptic, right? Because in the esoteric or spiritual, right, you don't die. You don't die. What you are cannot die. What you are in stops working, but what you are can't die. But while you're in this thing, there's exoteric and esoteric understandings about things you can do with or manifest with it. So the, the effect of, of this, this death, right, of the composite man of nature is as follows, Iman Ghazali says, so we, we get to frame it where for people that may say death leave the body go to heaven or death as in uh, my, my mental state is raised death as in my, my old self is no longer functioning up here as the as the captain uh, sitting in the cockpit chair. My old self has had an experience that taught me something that a book couldn't teach me. And it taught it in such a way that I didn't hear it with my ears. I heard it from within the thing that the ears sit on. And you feel it in this so-called fleshy lump that makes sure blood keeps pumping through your body, right? But you feel the lightness in your heart. You, you, you really feel that when you keep those, those two combined. But man has two souls, he says, an animal soul and a spiritual soul. Nafs at the bottom station of the seven stations of the soul and spiritual soul perfect itself at the top or at least in the middle at the heart, <laughs> working its way to the top, right? <clears throat> Iman Ghazali says that the seat of the animal soul is the heart from which this soul issues a issues like a subtle vapor and it pervades all the members of the body, giving power of sight to the eye, giving power of hearing to the ear, and to every member of the faculty performing its own appropriate function, doing what it's supposed to do is animating force, right? Wagging my thumb and not moving any of the other fingers. Choose to move one part of the body and leave everything else completely still. It might be compared to, or this, this essence <clears throat> and the realization of it, right? It says it might be compared to A lamp carried about in a cottage. Hmm. The light of which falls on the walls wherever it goes. The heart is the wick of this lamp, right? And when the supply of oil is cut off for any reason, the lamp dies. Such is the death of the animal soul. Because when the supply of things that it's looking for or these carnal passions and desires, this thing I need to go do, I want to go do this, I want to go do this, I should need to do this, or these this, this shiny things, right? Materialistic things, uh, dunya, that really don't serve any spiritual purpose to benefit self for the next person. As soon as that light goes out, I can't even look for some of the things that I, I think are nice and shiny that trying to keep and covet to myself at all. So such as that is the death of the animal soul because it can truly only exist in bottom three stations of the soul. Once it gets up to the heart, no animal can't come knock on that door and then pick up some sacred beads and a cloth and start to polish it because that animal is not trying to put in no work like that. The mouse ain't trying to put in no, no work like that at the heart. So it, it, it has to be converted and been brought up through those stages, like he was saying earlier, to even get there, to even see where the dark light is coming from, to follow it and then know at the end of time frame in this body, there's going to be another existence, there's going to be another, another being. If 
body drops, but the thing on the inside never dies. It goes to a different dimension that the body can't go to. I almost from back to back lines and in, in Masalako Jinnan, Bama gives another little corner at how to go about overcoming that animal nafs and not 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 getting scared when we confront it, right? Because sometimes with, with shadow work, you really gotta you really have to go in there. You really have to go in there and it's dark and you don't know what in the world you're gonna bump into or what in the world you're gonna see. But when you get down there and realize it's just your nafs, it's your nafs. Nobody else's knobs is down there. Mama mentions <clears throat> or confronting with such a fierce enemy as the knobs will incite man unto appealing to Allah's help. Because when you get down there and realize what has to be overcome, you have to rely on this source on the inside that you know comes from a higher plane. And you have to rely on it and its connection from there to bring you out of the lower up so that you can polish it up a little bit so next time you, that light shining a little bit more it's shining outward and you're you're, you're living how we're supposed to live carrying the, the title of, of muslim right don't wrap your head up like this and turn around and go to the hood store and buy a 12 pack of corona let's <laughs> talk for a lot i'm gonna mention that this this person is going to appeal to allah's help and that person leans to cleansing his soul, purifying the heart as to lift it towards the Lord, or in this case, purifying the lower self so it can get up to the heart. So now it is pure and it's going to clean up its dwelling place. There's some alchemy that happens right there. Bamba mentions <clears throat> as far as getting rid of those vices, right, that are attached to those the nafs that are attached to specific vibes of carnal passions and desires people may have in materialistic gain that they want with no spiritual benefit. Um, I also mentions just a few lines down as for the way to get rid of all the vices that is turning resolutely towards our Lord in humility. It is far more reasonable, far more reasonable far more reasonable to appeal to the master of a dog than trying to tame the dog by itself. Hmm. It's more reasonable to appeal to the true self that is in control of this vessel that is inhabiting and it chooses to make sure those lower entities, those lesser entities, those lower vibrations, every dark bone piece of the knife or a gin that could exist at the lower three stations of the soul either stay down there with my foot on your neck, right? Or if you're going to try to get up to the heart and listen to Allah and Muhammad recite the Quran, like it says in the book, and I have to go through transmutation. But that has to come from up here. That has to come from the one that can control the dog. There's the one that controls the animal self. The one that controls the lower self. <clears throat> Doesn't let it run wrapped it, right? With the spiritual, uh, with the spiritual soul, because he just said man has two souls, animal soul, spiritual soul. With the spiritual soul or the human soul, he says the case is different Vibes about the same, case is different. It is indivisible. It is indivisible. But you can break down all these individual pieces of the thing that it is in, right? To divide it up, hand. We all agree that this is a hand, right? Pinky. We all agree that this is this is a pinky. And piece this thing together and then realize this is a human body we have now. But even with that knowledge of self of that indwelling spirit, <clears throat> Imam Ghazali says it is indivisible. Can't divide it at all. And by it, by it alone is how man knows his Lord or is by how man knows Allah. It's so to speak, he paints such beautiful pictures that some of them are kind of, kind of funny, but they did. It's so to speak the, the, that the rider of an animal or the rider of the animal soul, in this case, the rider of the nafs, 
and when it perishes, it still remains. The writer of the animal self still remains even after this body that identified more with the animal self stops being, but that indivisible essence still remains. It's like a horseman who has just been dismounted. I just got off the horse. It's like a horseman that has just, that has just been dismounted. He just dropped the body. The horseman just got off the horse, but the horseman, the indwelling spirit, is still here. Where 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 else could it go? It's what Iman Ghazali is painting. Or it's like a, a, a hunter who's lost all his weapons. I can't go pick up no squash out my my grandma's yard no more because I don't have hands in the in the in the Akira or in the afterlife. So the that steed or that horse that the rider fell off of or those weapons were granted to the human soul. So that by means of them it may pursue and capture the phoenix of love and knowledge of God. If it has affected that capture, if it's if it's done that, it's not a grief, right? That now I have to put these tools down. I gotta I gotta get off the horse, man. I I like this I like this horse, man. Like I don't want to no, I don't want to get off the horse, and I got I ain't got no muscles, y'all. But you know, I gotta I gotta get out of the body. No, I don't want to get out of the body. It's not grief that's attached to that moment for the person that realizes it's the spiritual that's indwelling that even makes the body work and be able to even identify as such. But it's rather a relief, he says, a relief to be able to lay those weapons aside and to dismount from that weary steed. I don't want to live to 120 years old. Mm -mm. I'll be all right. <laughs> The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, mentioned like death is a welcome gift of God to the believer. It's like a welcome home gift. But alas, right? For that soul which loses its steed and its hunting weapons, for the person who's dropped the body before realizing that the, the prize that's wrapped in this gift is really its self. All right, then as it captured the prize, its misery will be regret and indescribable. Indescribable. Now he knows he's the indivisible spirit, but he's he's experiencing what recompense Allah speaks of in the Quran for those that see and have uh, heard and seen these signs and still turn around to go worship pagan deities or still turn around and go to rob and steal and kill people. And then when it's time for you to finally drop your body, you're like, no, I don't want to die. <laughs> Many people did this particular person take away from somebody else. You know, he want to go. So now at that point, never had an experience to realize this knowledge of self on, on the inside of his self and realize how pressured it is that we get to experience creation through this, this space suit for just a little blip of time, right? He never got a chance to realize that this death that may have been causing people or, or this death that he's actually going through identifying as the physical, he doesn't know that it's actually his birth. He doesn't know that it's actually his welcome home party. He didn't know that his, his essence never dies and identify with it and, and make sure to act and exude the knowledge of that being within yourself, of that's a godly and angelic force residing within that has a certain vibration of the 99 names of Allah. Those attributes are embodiable. This is a body, right? If he identified with the body, just like this, this person did in the example, the, in the material things that the body can obtain when 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 the person dies then they then they die then they really they really die that is that is that's painful everything that the person chased with the body 
never got a chance to experience how beautiful it is to have something on the inside of this to even make it be able to go after something. Somewhere there's someone who's bound to a chair and cannot move <laughs> for themselves, right? I'll stop, girl. I know, no, no rant. But we get what he's saying. There's, there's the material side and the spiritual side, and there's a way of identifying with both in accordance to the path as long as the process is going to the higher and not being complacent, riding on the horse for the rest of your life, being in the body for the rest of the existence. A little further consideration will show you how entirely distinct the human soul is from the body and its members. Limb after limb might be paralyzed and just stop working altogether. But the individuality of the soul is still unimpaired. All right. Pause right there. I forget where I saw this at, but it the videos and and uh and and whatnot uh of people having um amputations and whatnot. And right after they're they're having, you know. The amputation done, they go through uh, recovery, and they're getting back out in their in their regular life. Some people say that they, when they're directing their essence, right, to move their body, even though he may not have an arm, there's still a phantom feeling of the arm being there, even though it's not there. So just like Imam Ghazali just mentioned, the limb may be paralyzed and cease working, or in some cases, it might even be cut off altogether. Right? But the individuality of that soul, the indwelling spirit, is still unimpaired. Further, the body that we have right now is, is no longer the body that we had as a child. It's entirely different. The body that we have right now isn't the same body that we had last week. The body that we have right now isn't even the same body that we had when we got on the Zoom call. The body that we might have when we watch the video when it goes up on the channel isn't going to be the same body as we have right now. It's always entirely different, always entirely distinct. Yet personality now is identical with the personality then. I'm still Tavares. I'm still that her son, right? In Greek or Latin, per meaning uh, through uh, a conduit that, that something comes out of. But what comes out of it? Sun. But there's a slight accent on that N in those languages. It's like a hard N, so it's not sun, the sun. So per sunna, per thing that something comes out of. Second word, sonna, means sound. Think about that, right? Speeding down the street, and then you get pulled over by the police. He walks up to the car. Sir, do you have any drugs, guns, alcohol, knives, firearms, explosives on your person? He's asking you, do you have anything on this thing that you make sound come out of? So it's, it's with that type of knowledge, and remembrance of it's easy to conceive of it when, when you're persisting in existing as the body and then when it's done all together all of the essential attributes that were independent of the body that even may have made the body work or function such as the love and knowledge of God also do not die can't Al-Hayul Qayyum, Allah is the ever-living and self-subsisting. Anything that matches that vibration of those names is also Al-Hayul Qayyum, the indwelling spirit that does not die and sustains self. So it's, it's easy to know when you're when you're the spirit, like when you're in the process of dying, because now you're you're finally going through the experience <laughs> after running away from it after all the signs in the Quran when the person finally is dying and they're having the experience now they know but you're looking back like all that time wasted chasing what 
I didn't help anybody out with all that money. I was hoarding myself. And I didn't go feed people with the, the other brothers down the street. Because I just and really died. <laughs> this is the meaning of that saying in the Quran. The good things abide. And by, the, by, by they abide, meaning they are always where they are. They are always there. They are always here in the eternal and forever present now. But instead of carrying away with you knowledge, you depart in ignorance of God. This ignorance is also an essential attribute, Imam Ghazali is saying, and it will abide as darkness of the soul and the seed of misery for the one who willingly chose to be blind during the life and, and it's finally that day's no 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 the Quran says he who is blind in this life will be blind in the next life and astray from the path Allah says Allah guides those to him whom he wills in regards to all those vices that might be a, trying to rise up in, in the body through the, through the the channels to play the role as this higher self if it can even get that high the Kafir Bamba mentions that a way to get rid of all of them a way to get rid of everything that might have a person to the point to where they're getting ready to not even just drop the body, go to a different mental state. Someone might have said something and it was <gasps> as blasphemy. And nope, 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 not accepting that. Nope, nope, not accepting that. But just a few paragraphs up, Iman Ghazali was speaking about coming with an open heart and open mind. But this person just closed his up. Nope, nope. It's a way to get rid of all of those vices that could make that could keep a person far away from ever acting as such is turning resolutely towards the Lord Allah in humility. Let's talk for Allah. I entered the same note twice. <laughs> Let's talk for Allah. There it is. There it is. 133, 134, 135. The reason that this human spirit that is seeking to return to that upper world is because that's its origin, that's where it came from. So it, you know, that's where it's supposed to go, that's where it needs to go, and that it's of an angelic nature. It was sent down into the lower spheres, Imam Ghazali says, against its will, <laughs> to acquire knowledge and experience. Right. Ekaf Bamba mentions that, oh, my brother, know that the greatest wish of the dead is, is coming back to life. So as to spend on the earth were it only the slightest lapse of time and to perform just one good deed liable to give me some benefit so that I can turn back around and come back to the hereafter and then I'll be good to walk in the Jannah. Do thence make the most of the rest of thy life. Regretting past times misused in trivialities or trivial things without adoring Allah and turn around and race towards those good deeds before it is too late. It's like Sheikh Sufi mentions with if a person does bad deed, turn around and do good deed immediately. Do two, three, four, five, fifteen good deeds immediately to make sure that that that, that scale stays balance because we don't want it to tip the other way we definitely don't want to get to a point where I'm, I'm trying to get to the akhira or trying to learn something new and i keep my mind and my heart closed to new information because they said that jesus wasn't white he was black let's, let's talk for it a lot a lot mentions in the quran about this go down from hence all of you about the, the, the fall or coming down. Go down from hence all of you. There will come to you instruction from me. And they who obey the instruction need not fear. La taqawfu. Remember that zikr from the sheikh. 
need not fear. Those who obey the instruction need not fear, nor shall they grieve or be grieved because they receive that instruction. Keep it as a zikr, whether it's a, a zikr or reading the Quran and studying it and meditating on it and allowing Allah to speak to you through it see certain things like him just saying it plain as day the, the verse I breathe into man of my spirit so this self that the person just bumped into in chapter one that he thinks is his self right mm. chapter four is talking about the, the, the next world chapter three was this world so We've left this world or this particular mental state or this particular vibration and are going on to the next. You know, I realized that I breathe my spirit into man. I breathe into man of my spirit. So now that I know that, and this is a, a law does not fit in the heavens or the earth, but he fits in the heart of a true believer. Hmm. That now I know that the source, this likeness that you feel in your heart when you do a good deed or you make someone smile is of celestial origin, which means it's not even material at all. It's the origin of that soul. Just as the health of an animal soul in the equilibrium of its component parts, so like what makes up an animal, when this equilibrium is restored, when impaired by the appropriate medicine. So the health of the human soul consists in a moral equilibrium, which is maintained and repaired when needful by ethical instruction and moral precepts. What do you, it's like Greek Roman writing almost the way all those comments in that particular paragraph, but just as the animal soul consists or the ego, the nafs, consists of certain things that it tries to uh, to do and, and in order to rise on up. Jake Alfred Obama also teaches that there are specific weapons to use against those, right? There's a medicine for the knots. There's a medicine for power. There's a medicine for dunya. There's a medicine for shaitan. There is also the exact same for the, the indwelling, right? Ethical instruction and moral precepts. Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I know I know so. I don't, I don't know anything, but Shaykh Muhammad said in verse 1, verse 685, thy nafs, your basic, the drive, basic drives, belongs also to the creatures. Do watch on her, for she is man's most harmful enemy, the, the nafs as conveyed by prophetic tradition. Quran and Sunnah, Sunnah being prophetic tradition of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. It says, never give in to the whims and the desires of the nafs. Never even attempt to satisfy her wishes. Never attempt to satisfy those drives from the nafs that are trying to rise up to a place they know they don't belong. Be harsh. <laughs> Mama says, be harsh and austere with the knives and say it. You take your centaur and you, <laughs> you sharpen it and you cut the knife's head off. Can't rise up if you can't see where it's going and try to get up there in the first place, right? So some theologians have supposed that the, the human soul is annihilated after death. I know we remember the councils. There was Council of Nicaea, Constantinople, you see, was all arguing over things that honestly they could I probably couldn't have even verified at that point. Right? Some theologians have supposed that that soul is annihilated after death and then it's restored, but that's contrary both to logic and sound reasoning and the Quran, Imam Ghazali states, because the former shows us that death does not destroy the essential individuality of man. You can chop my hand off, but up here it's still going to uh, you can sense, you might be able to sense that hand. You didn't chop off 
just this part of the spirit that makes the hand work. The whole entire spirit is still indivisible. The Quran says, just like it mentions in the Bible, think not that those who were slain in the way of their Lord or in the way of Allah or in the way of God are dead. Nay, they are alive. They are rejoicing in the presence of their Lord and in the grace bestowed upon them. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. And just as a reminder, as any, any naysayers, uh, Sufi haters, there's not one word in the law about any of the dead, good or bad, being annihilated. The prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, is said to have questioned the spirits of slain individuals as to whether they had found the punishments with which he had threatened them, real or not. So those souls that speak from the grave are not annihilated. They're speaking from the grave in those mystic traditions. The followers of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, in this particular story in the Hadith shows up and, and asks them, well, astaghfirullah, what was the good of questioning him? Like, what was the good of Questioning the, the spirit of this, this slain individual in the ground, Ya Rasulullah, peace and blessings be upon you. He replied, They hear my words better than you do. <laughs> Ouch. Now that's a bruise that might cause an abrasion. Because a reminder again, whoever keeps on disparaging or turning away from or going against uh, Tasawuf, uh, Sufism, inner wisdom, all the time without even repenting, saying stop their law or performing Kaaba, turning back around, coming to it, shall irremediably, irremediably, I got it, irremediably perish, plunged into deadly sins by divine justice, uh, disparaging, is a word that means expressing the opinion of something that is of very little worth. Um, kind of like that person that walked up to the Prophet Muhammad, he said, Let's be upon him, and was asking him, He did. Why are you, why, why are you questioning him? Stop for a lot. Believe. That particular person should have stood there and and and, and listened to see that slain spirit in the, in that grave and that particular hadith speak back and say, "Yes, I committed such and such and such a sin in my life, and now after that life, after that mental, physical, spiritual vibration, I'm I'm dealing with." repercussions of it. That's why Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said that those people hear his words better than better than he do, because this particular person I'm I'm seeing probably should have paid a lot more attention to that occurrence right there instead of trying to interrupt the conversation. Right? Let's stop for a while. I'm not gonna interrupt no conversation like that. Some Sufis have seen or have had the unseen world of heaven and hell revealed to them. Keep reading the Salik with Jim now. We'll bump into a little bit of that. But when when in a state of uh, death-like trance, on recovering consciousness, their faces betray the nature of the revelations they've had by two marks, joy or terror. He says that because no visions are necessary to prove what will occur to every thinking man, that when death or ignorance or not knowing, not knowing the truth about la ilaha illallah has been stripped of him and his senses, and he is left with nothing but his bare personality, personality making the sound come true 
person. If while on earth he has too closely attached himself to objects perceived by the senses, right? things perceived by the senses, an extraneous amount of wealth, an extraneous amount of conquered lands, slaves, male, female, big house, et cetera, et cetera. Because when the separation happens, you have to leave all of those objects, he says. Whereas on the contrary, if he's if he's as far as possible, as far as he is able to turn his back on those things and fix his love and affection on the supreme God, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will welcome death as a means of escape from worldly entanglements because of the divine union with him whom he loves. So in in, in this case, we echo another word or two from, from the Prophet Muhammad, or one of his sayings that death is a bridge which unites a friend to a friend. Also, this world is a paradise for the infidels. It's a whole bunch of stuff I can attain here and get this and that and whatnot, but when I drop my body, I can't take none of it with me. But it is a prison for the faithful. A final connection. Do know that to feel like you are living in or to live in what we call a neighborhood uh, with Allah, closeness with Allah, or uns in uh, Arabic, is, is achieved through regular practice of dhikr, true knowledge, marifa, that is acquired through continuous meditation or Thicker. If I remember Allah, continue to remember Allah when there is truth revealed from Allah through his names that you acquire through continuous meditation on and through them, they continue to come to you and can exude from you like your person. May the 99 names of Allah be the thing that are the purr through our sun. May the vibrations of the blessings attached to those 99 names emanate through our being. Alhamdulillah. Because when the body drops and, and we raise our spiritual vibe, right, to match the vibe of the beloved, we're able to attain that wah, that wuju, that union with the beloved and be close to the one who's, who sent him Allah. We will attain that heavenly vibe with our soul when we die, but body can't go. There's a challenge in the Quran. Till the day nobody's done it, right? No matter what they put on TV. O ye assembly of mankind and jinn, traverse ye through the highest realms of heaven if you have the ability to do so, comma, nay, but you cannot except but with the permission of your higher self, with your Lord, with your Rabb, because Arabic grammar, there's not really a definite translation for the word Rabb in uh, Arabic to English. So that's why you may hear some people say different uh, words that kind of mean a similar vibration when talking about that particular station. So on the other hand, if there was no remembrance, if there was no embodying, polishing so that the light of those can reflect out, if there was no meditation on those to determine ways to get better at it with a little bit of time I got here. On the other hand, the pains which souls suffer after death all have their source in excessive love of the world. The prophet said that Every unbeliever after death will be tormented by 99 snakes oh. with nine heads. Ooh. DJ, run that back. <laughs> the prophet said that every unbeliever, right, every unbeliever after death will be tormented by 99 snakes, each having nine heads. Some simple minded people, let's talk for a lot. Some simple-minded people have examined unbelievers' graves, wondering 
at why they're failing to see these snakes because they don't understand that they're not real snakes. They don't understand that those snakes have their abode within the unbeliever's spirit. Those are 99 potentialities of those 99 names of Allah waking up and rising, right? Rising above the animal nature, definitely way above the, the nature of a, of a snake in this particular imagery because that's the lowest of the low right there you're going to get. Slithering on the ground. A snake ain't got no wings, can't get off the ground. They have their abode within that believer spirit. So it's tough for a lot. Those people who wasted that time digging holes, looking for some snakes in the grave because they read up the deep at the surface level. Stop for a lot. <laughs> Those 99 potentialities, Imam Ghazali also states, have existed even in them. Those people before they died, where they were those people and those disbelievers qualities that were symbolized as jealousy or hatred, hypocrisy, pride, deceit, etc. Negative vibrations you'll never find in the 99 names of our law list. That's all this, this particular person embodied. Every one of which springs directly or remotely from the love of the world. Stop for a lot. So to, that might sound a little apocalyptic, but I don't know if anybody's ever heard that one about unbelievers being tormented by 99 snakes in the grave with nine heads apiece. But to paint that picture of that symbolism, there are those 99 snakes matching up with the 99 names of Allah because for the disbeliever in this particular story, he was so focused on a lower vibration. He was focused on some of the four enemies, if not all four of those four enemies, thinking he can get something here that is better than what he gets in the next. So he focused on those. So in the grave, he's going to be tormented by the things he gave the most attention to because his remembrance was not of Allah and realizing that you don't have to live like that brother to be rich. You don't have to live like that to be wealthy because richness and wealth, if we're talking about material things, don't get me wrong, yes, we need money. I want to keep these lights on. I need to go cut hair at the barbershop tomorrow and, and continue. But I don't need an overabundance of it so much to the point to where I can't spend it in a lifetime. Such is the doom of those who in the Quran says they set their hearts on this world rather than the next. If those snakes were merely external, if they really were snakes, <laughs> they might hope to escape that torment. They might hope to try to get out of that grave, but it would only be for a moment. It would only be for a moment, but only in their own inherent attributes because they identify with those. They they embody those, and that snake can't dig itself out of the casket. So how could they escape? I don't want to say at that point it's too late. I'm not a, a, an imam or a Baha'i Quran or whatnot, but in the Quran, it does say right, to make sure we don't wind up in spots like that. Leave what is apparent sin, leave it and concealed thereof. Indeed, those who, those who are in blame for sin will be recompensed for that which they used to commit. So the the, the, the picture that Imam Ghazali expounded on with the, the unbeliever, the Hadith with the 99 snakes and whatnot, a service level exoteric and esoteric explanation is all expounded on from one Quran verse. <laughs> so take for instance, the case of a man who sold the slave girl without knowing how much was attached to her until she is quite out of his reach. He's far gone. Right. Then the love of her hitherto or once that was dormant is now about to wake up in him in such intensity to amount to torture him. He's willing to do anything. He's willing to 
creep around and uh, hunt and sneak to sting and bite like a snake so that when he realizes it down there, the only thing he would have to do, the only thing left to do is to just throw himself in the fire. So such is the effect of the love of the world. Just, just one of the of, of the four carnal enemies, just Dunya. Go, go, out, go, and wake up tomorrow and, and love Dunya more than more than love our lives and see what happens. But such is the effect of the love of the world, which those who have it often suspect not. They don't suspect it. Don't even see it coming. There's a whole bunch of stuff that it seems like the world has to offer, but when it's taken from them and the world is taken from them. The torment and the vein of longing for those things that you can't even get is such that they would gladly exchange it for any number of real external snakes and scorpions when they realized that they really wasted all of that time chasing the world and they're in that moment where <clears throat> you're ready to leave the body and you know what you're about to get ready to 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 experience in, in the after uh, that person's going to wish to really be laying down there with all those 99 snakes with nine heads. Bamba, Shekhafu Bamba mentions that the fruit of meditation is the admittance in Allah's neighborhood or the Hadratullah or he has already he that has already got true knowledge or marifa, the fruit of meditation is admittance into Allah's neighborhood, into Jannah, especially for he who already has marifa, true knowledge of it. No belief. There's no belief in marifa. It's true knowledge. As for the meditation of those types of ascetics, I'm speaking about it concerns the fading of this world and the frail and wickedness of, of its affairs and what it has to offer. I'm gave a weapon of overcoming the dunya and Masalako Jinnan, right? <laughs> Just like we spoke of earlier. Think of meditation, meditation on the signs of Allah. Those signs of Allah are of a heavenly nature. So of course you're going to vibrate a whole lot higher than the material world. Therefore, no more, no more dunya. Three more carnal enemies. It's tough for a lot. more highlights here and right at about 9 30 we'll pause and close on up We're about towards the end every sinner thus carries with him into the world beyond the death of the beyond the world of stop or lie every sinner thus carries with him into the world beyond death the instruments of his own punishment ouch quran says verily you shall see hell you shall see it with the eye of certainty, Rayinul Yaqeen. And hell surrounds the unbelievers. So he's switched the vibe from physically dying. As they say in the Bob Molly uh, Peter Tosh song, everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to stop for a lot. Hell surrounds the unbelievers. It does not say it will surround them. It says it surrounds the unbelievers. And Imam Ghazali says it is even around them right now. So this is why when, when somebody's like bound by or is like having that internal strife and war with self with all these negative thoughts, the words and, and actions and dealing with the repercussions of them, they are now subject to those repercussions because they made them manifest. And while they're dealing with these, these negative vibrations that are around them, that is surrounding them. Bro, how you feeling today, man? 
man, bro, I don't know more, man. So, man, I'm going through hell, bro, man. Like, man, I went over there and I got pulled over and, man, the police said I ain't had no license. My license expired two days ago and, man, they, they searched to get... The... <laughs> really going through hell. So it's heaven and hell of mental states, right? State of mind. Because he decided to sit in the negative vibrations and then when one really popped up, Barely you shall see hell, that particular person did. You shall see it with the eye of certainty. And hell surrounds the unbelievers. It doesn't surround the believers. Unbelievers, disbelievers. So some might some might object. I know some might object because he manga he mongers always says some might object. If such is the case, then who can escape hell? Who can escape uh a, a negative vibration who can escape having a thought with? who can escape that or who is not more or less bound to the world by its various tires of affection and interest who can who can escape that if they're if they're bound to the world by all those tires and that's how we do the shake out it says to answer this we have to point towards some people that we call the fakirs or the fukara uh or righteous teachers, uh, Sufis, uh, ascetics, uh, mystics, right, who have entirely disengaged themselves from the love of the world. Serene Salehu, Borum Khelkham, Second Khalifa, Sheikh Sufi took Bayat with in 1996. It is said that if a person would walk up and try to have a conversation with Sirin Salehu about anything, anything that vibrates outside of the Quran and the Sunnah, Sirin Salehu would not say a word until the person stopped talking. And then he would mention if it does not involve the Quran and if the conversation does not involve the Sunnah, the prophetic traditions, whether we're reading them or we're trying to exude them or figure out a, 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 a way to use them in action to help someone in this society. If we're not talking about Quran and Sunnah like that, I don't have anything to say. Get it, just or Go to Sarin Salehu and try to talk about anything outside of Quran and Sunnah because it won't be a conversation. The nafs, hawa, and dunya, and shaitan are overcome by the fakir or the fukara, the mystic, the ascetic, the sufi. So if entities that cause hell to surround the disbelievers is cut off, right? This is why the sufi, the mystic, the fukara, the, the ascetic is, is the prime example to show a disbeliever in a, in a situation like that is what he's saying. But even some of those, the Fukura, uh, that have entirely disengaged ourselves from the love of the world, hmm, we have worldly possessions, wife, children, houses, et cetera, et cetera. There are those, right? There are those who though they might have some affection for these things, he words, they may have some affection for these things, but they love Allah yet more. There are others as well, and there are a great number who have some love for God. But the love of the world so preponderates and perpetuates in them that they'll have to suffer a good deal of uh, pain after death before they are thoroughly weaned from it. Now, they will have to suffer a good deal of pain. There will be tests and trials on the path, Shaky but Paul said, the harder the better, right? If I don't get over the speed bump, I'll never know what's on the other side of the, of the speed bump. He's stuck over here and exit the apartment complex if I'm stuck on the other side of the speed bump. But they will have to get purified through having the irada, 
the will, the drive, the intention to overcome this process so that they either get stronger and realize that they were already strong and they overcome and they get to a point where they realize that they didn't have anything to worry or be afraid of at all. Many profess to love God. Many people profess to love Allah, but a man might easily test himself, test himself. A man may easily test himself. Like you get in cheat codes here. A man may test himself by watching which way the balance of his affection inclines when the commands of Allah come into collision with some of his desires. So when there's a teaching, Sufi must have daily practice. Here's daily practice. Do daily practice. Tomorrow when I wake up, I say, I don't know, do, no, no, I'm not going to do my daily practice tomorrow. Stop. Check my scale. Bruh, <laughs> a stuff for life. No, I'm, I'm balancing right back out by doing the exact same thing that had came into collision with that desire. That doesn't mean that, dang, I wanted to go to the, the park first thing tomorrow morning. I can still go to the park first thing tomorrow morning. I can go to the park and do my sitting. I can go to the park and read the side to the birds and the squirrels. Hey. Bamba says any such that resolves not to performing a weird, to performing daily practice and so on, goes on dissipating his lifetime in some less profitable activities, shall win nothing on the day of rewarding, but sorrow, pain, and sadness. So we go back to the 99 names of Allah class. Uh, I think this was like three years or so ago, right before COVID. And that 99 names of Allah class, I know there might be a couple of us that were in that one, but there was, there was, there were atoms being split every single class with those 99 names of Allah ways at that point in time. I didn't uh, have that much knowledge about it all. The system of uh, Abjad and each particular name of Allah having a particular number and vibratory rate to it that can be used with other Abjad formulas to <laughs> not knowing that and then coming and bumping into people that might look like I've been studying these Sufis online. There's a bunch of people at the park up there dressed like them Susies. Why are you yelling so loud? Uh, 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 no, I ain't going over there. And we'll never, ever know. We'll never, ever know that the stock for a lot of some of them Susies might not have known that they were yelling because they weren't even in the body. They weren't even in the body. And when this person goes through the experience and is getting ready to drop his body and, and realizes there's coming a point in time where he is not going to be in the body, let that be one of the visions that looks back and sees. Spent all this time not even knowing that those Sufi brothers that was up under that tree doing them zickers and spinning around in circles, they weren't just crazy voodoo mystics. Some of them were spinning around so and reciting the correct name and the correct number that they popped right on out of their body and they went to they went to where they went to. <laughs> and not knowing that, Iman Ghazali does a quick flip and says that this this species of of hell or this particular type of person that's exempt that's existing in that mental state that has to look back at that, it might be symbolized by the one one last short parable. Suppose that a certain king has been celebrating his son's marriage. All right, king's at his party, son's getting married, the nice princess. And in the evening, the, the young prince, the young, uh, he comes home. But then he goes off with some of his companions, all right, and gets drunk. He goes off and he gets plastered. So 
after they're out partying and all of his friends and whatnot, he returns back to the palace, quotation marks, as he thinks. Right. Intoxicated. He's drunk. Goes back into the palace and he enters a chamber where a light is burning and he lies down as he supposes by his bride. Right? There's somebody laying down there drunk as he is, it might have resembled his house as thought for a while, I have no idea. But in the story, Mom Ghazali is stating that in the morning when his soberness returns and he can see clearly, right, he is a ghast of himself. Like he, he's scared. He is deathly afraid of where he realizes that he is at. He went out and got plastered celebrating after his marriage, knowing his dad is the king and came back home drunk and passed out by a female that was asleep by a fire and didn't realize that he mistook his palace for what was actually a mortuary. So the drunk man stumbled into a mortuary thinking that it was the palace and the couch that he thought the wife was sitting on was actually what they would call a beer, a B I E R. The, the the table that they leave the corpse on during autopsies and, and, and whatnot. And it was an old woman beside him that was beginning to decay. I can imagine he threw up right then and started to run away. Of course, on emerging quickly, on running from the on running from the mortuary with all of his garments, everything he just wore to his wedding last night. He's still going all of his stuff he decked out still. But you're running from a mortuary in the following morning like about to lose it. And he sees his father, the king, approaching with a squadron of soldiers getting ready to go look for him in every place that they could think he would be. Shame not knowing and then coming to realization when it is too late and being forced with a squadron of of soldiers and the king. So Imam Ghazali is so humble. He says, such is a feeble picture of the shame those will feel in the next world who in this have greedily abandoned themselves to what they thought were delights. So the sun and his perception of being or living in the now or living his life I'm, I'm living my life free resulted in a, a change in his trajectory he went a little bit too far away from the path he went a little bit too far away from the way of life he's supposed to uphold as the prince that's up under this king in the society that just had a just had a beautiful royal wedding all right went too far away from the path and is past now and is reaping a cruel punishment by having this happen to him. His dad and the soldiers are walking up to him now after the fact. And he got to tell his dad, the king, and the soldiers who thinks his son got kidnapped or something that, no, I just got plastered drunk and I passed out in a mortuary because I thought it was my palace. And he's receiving the punishment or the recompense from that in his present now. Now the last the last verbal image or the last verbal picture in the in the in the chapter that Imam Ghazali goes into in regards to Exoteric, esoteric, not knowing, coming into, and then subsequently knowing that not only is there a chance for, as far as heaven and hell, just being uh, mental states of mind, a future life is possible. I might wake up tomorrow and go to work and somebody might say something that I've never heard before, and it might not sit well with me until I approach it open-minded and with the open heart. And you know what? 
actually does make a little bit of sense if I try to look at it from a different perspective. So now the old me just died dead because it was a mental perception. That old mental perception died and it fell on off. And now it's a little bit higher because something that the mouse was going to get me to turn away from didn't. And the connection that me and that person had after that conversation was a, <laughs> was a whole lot better than I thought it was. I, I've never spoken like that with a pastor before in a barbershop, but we ain't going to get that. But this future life also, this future life is possible, but the doctrine that that teaches it, some people say, is, is so involved in, in doubt and mystery that uh, it's, un, it's impossible to, to decide whether it's true or not. So one person should, should say to a person like that, ah, you, you should give it the benefit of the doubt then. All right. The Rambas that we mentioned earlier says, leave all things that are doubtful or leave all things that you know are clouded in sin. And even if the, the, the path that leads away from that looks like a path you ain't never walked down before, I would I would give the path leading away from Hellfire and Brimstone <laughs> a chance before I turn around and walk right into Hellfire and Brimstone or walk right into never knowing that I could have a, a relationship with <clears throat> a, a, a pastor in the way that I've grown to have with the person I was speaking to in that particular story, All right? Suppose that this person is, or you, or any of us, really, suppose you're about to eat food and somebody tells you back then in that day, hey, 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 a serpent has spat venom on that food. You probably would refrain from eating it. You probably, or if, if you were super hungry, you, you, you would still fight through the attempt or the drive to eat it because you just rather endure the pangs of hunger than take that chance. Like, can you prove or verify whether there's snake men among that plate that so and so said not to eat? All right. We we can't. Because the informant or the one saying it may be in jest, may be telling the truth, or he may be lying. So leave things that are doubtful. Chapter two, verse one and two in the Quran. This is the book within which there is no doubt. All right. No doubt, no doubt. Or, for example, for some of my brothers a little bit further, east, uh, it says, or suppose you are ill, and a charm writer says, give me a rupee. Let's talk her a lot. Don't pronounce it like that. Give me a rupee, and I will write a charm, which you can tie around your neck and will cure you. You probably will give that guy the rupee on, just on the chance of receiving the benefit from the charm, all right, or even further, if an astrologer were to say to you, when the moon has reached a certain constellation on a certain day at a certain time of the night, drink such and such a medicine and, and you will recover. Even though you might have little faith in astrology, right? You just might just might not believe it. It may have little faith in astrology, but you probably would very likely try the experiment just on the chance that that astrologer might be right. So would we not then think that reliance is all well placed on the words of the prophets and the saints and the holy men that were also convinced right, that there was a future life as the promise of this charm writer or this astrologer? Prophets have, have said these things, right? that, that there is a future life, there is an afterlife, there is an akhirah. It's one of the names of Allah, not the names of Allah, or al -akhiru. After That which comes behind or after. I'm on like But he just used the prophets as an example that gave teachings about a, a life after. And since we're, we're here now, those prophets are not here. So some of those disbelievers, stop for a lot, that disbelieved in what the prophet brought and said, no, there is no heaven, there's no hell, there's no after, there's no afterlife. When you dead, you dead. I don't believe in all of that. Well, were they right? Because here we are now after the life of the one who was given the example 
people will wind up tra- taking perilous trips and journeys for just just for the sake of material profit. But people don't want to suffer a little bit right now. They don't want to get over the test and trial right now for the sake and the joy of the hereafter. Imam Ali Ali Unwalila said once in arguing with a believer with an unbeliever, right? An unbeliever, he said, uh, if you are right in how you feel about their not being, then neither of us will be any worse in the future, right? But if we are right, we shall escape and you shall suffer. Now, he said this not because he himself was in any doubt or he was trying to, you know, hit the, hit the unbeliever with a low blow, but it was just to make an impression on the on the unbeliever. From all that we have, all that we have, and all that's said in this particular chapter, it follows that man's chief business in this world is to prepare for the next, whether it's open-minded and open heart, so that when you bump into another person tomorrow that you usually might not want to have an experience with or talk to, you have an open mind and heart. So you walk into the gas station and you speak to the Indian guy that owns it, even though you don't like him in your neighborhood, it doesn't matter right now. He has some, some drinks that you want and you have money to pay him for those drinks that you want to put in your refrigerator. If you want a pack of skills, you got you got money to give him for the pack of skills to get from that store. So keep a lot in cordial with him. He didn't say that to hurt the person. So from chapter three to chapter four, Imam Ghazali sums it all up in one sentence towards the end and says that, that that's it. He didn't say that at all to hurt the person. He did that to make an impression so that that person would introspect to realize that his chief business should, should be preparing for the afterlife instead of focusing on just this one. Even in the mental perception, if that person was still stuck in that mental perception, he would have, he would never know. And not knowing, right, not knowing is a particular type of, I won't say it's a death, but damn, they're on the way, on the way there. Walked right away from the light of Allah. So, all that to say, even if any of the people in the stories uh, or the references or the hadith in this particular chapter were doubtful about a future existence, whether it's, I don't think I can learn that because learning something is knowing something you didn't know before. Uh, you should act like there is one. You should work like there is one, considering the tremendous issues at stake. It's like Sheikh Akhri Bamba Karim Rasul says, what is it? Work as if you will never die and pray like you will die tomorrow. Work as if you will never die and pray as if you will die tomorrow. Don't ever stop making a change. Don't ever stop making a, a, a positive action manifest from self. Never stop positively benefiting self and self situation. Never stop positively benefiting other people's selves and in, in their situation. If there's someone hungry at the park and you have food, feed the hungry person at the park. Whether it's literal food, a little two piece and a biscuit from KFC, or if you're the one walking up to that tree with those Sufis doing the zikr circle and yelling out loud around it, right? We can, we can feed that, that zikr circle by walking up and joining in. Because all they're saying is la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And with the understanding of that, la ilaha illallah, I'm not scared of any afterlife. I'm not scared of leaving this life to go to another because as soon as we finish up here i just got two new books in the mail on uh, some very interesting topics 
that I don't have a lot of knowledge about. So the old me is going to die tonight. And tomorrow is going to be a new one. Before we close or wrap up, I don't want to get too close to 10 o'clock. Does anyone have any uh, questions or anything to say or build on at all? I'll open the floor for a quick bit, inshallah. That speak now or ever hold the Yasalan. Chat as we close a short recitation through a couple of names of Allah through the letters and one of the names of the sun. Take up the Bamba as a dua and also as a as a reminder. The side of the excerpt from it is Rabbi Karimun, which means Rabbi, my Lord, our Lord. Karimun. Karimun is generous, most generous. Rabbi Karimun, wa siyun, wa yufadilu is that first line. He is generous, vast, expansive, and most preferred, meaning those attributes of Allah are preferred. He preferred them over those 99 snakes <laughs> that Imam Ghazali spoke of. Audu <laughs> Dehi wafa kri khadaza la huma maran bil mustafa salallahu alayhi wa sallam man khab hulu la yujjalu ya rabbi salli ala al habibi muhammadin wa la liwa al ashabi man khab hudalu Subhana Rabbi Rabbi Lizati and Yasifun, was a lamun of Al Mursaleen, Alhamdulillah, he rapid alameen. Halfway through, and would love to see the beloveds finishing up the second half of the book. Same Bismillah class, same Bismillah channel, same Bismillah time <laughs> next Wednesday. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May we all be blessed.